They call me Jake. 15 years ago, I went to prison for committing a crime with my brothers. I ain't my brother's keeper. I'm a big fan of Trey. I mean, I'm a big fan of hip hop, R&B music. I grew up with it all my life. So definitely familiar with Trey. So it was, uh, it was, it was a pleasure, you know? I wasn't sure what to expect, him transitioning into acting. You never know going into a new project, but it's been great. I mean, we really, you know, he's like family now. Hey. A real gentleman, hey, so curious, talented, you know, professional, hardworking. I mean, I can't say a bad word. And I will if I have to, you know? Who doesn't know who Trey Songs is? I definitely knew who Trey was, but this it was such a quick process. They were like, okay, Trey's doing this movie, sent me the script. They were like, your audition's tomorrow, so read it tonight. I was like, okay. And I went in and it was just magic. I love John, the director, from the first moment. And Trey, it's been so much fun working with him. He's amazing. Story uh, and the music field is one of dreams. You know, it's one that people wish for, one that people tell all the time. I had a dream, I, I sung in talent shows. My mother knew a guy who knew a guy, and from there I was did a 10 song demo. By the time I, I left high school, I was sleeping in my producer's basement on his futon, and a year after that, my mother said, it's a year, I gave you a year. You either have to have a deal or you need to get a job or go to school or whatever. So within that year's time, I was signed to Atlantic Records. I was so surprised how amazing Trey was. Like, working with him and seeing how great he was as an actor after already being a huge fan of his music was very interesting for me. Around here, he wasn't like Trey songs. It was sunny and he made himself attainable and available. You? You owe me now. It's hard to find someone like that, that, you know, he's that far along and where he is in his career, but he still has the work ethic as if he hasn't made it yet. Let's see who's who and what's what like we did back in the day. When we were over rehearsing, we was going through the um, parts we were gonna start getting physical at, and um, it was, I told myself, I do it for a living, man, so being rough with me, that's my zone right there. So we got pretty edgy and pretty physical. Trey, as I've told John Pogue, our director, many times, I was so surprised the first day that we had any kind of action, the way he handled himself, again, not being a guy that's, number one, been a guy in, in many films, but also a guy that hasn't done much action, but I could just tell right away, we've got a winner with this kid. Squibbing, ladies and gentlemen, is a function we use in movie world. Squibbing is known as blood splatter. It's hard work acting. It's, it's, it's long hours, lots of physicality. I mean, this is an action film. I left with a couple of uh, sore ribs, waking up in the morning like I finished sparring. <laughs> it's fun though, you know? And I, we try to, me and Trey try to do uh, a lot of the stunts ourselves. The Rat Nightclub is pretty much what Blaine's character is all about. And, and that was the place where you go for anything. You wanted prostitution, you wanted drugs, you wanted crime, you wanted Anything you wanted, you could get at the rat. I think the rat is a, a great metaphor for the film, for the relationship that Jake and Sonny have. It's a, a place that you definitely expect Jake to be. So this is the model of the club in scale. What we did was we took an existing warehouse and um, divided it off right here to give a long, narrow kind of a look. And the idea behind the rat is you have to go through the maze to get to the dance area and then they get to the dance area where all the action is. And then in the action of the show, um, Sonny, our, our cop, comes up the stairs and confronts Jake um, in a big confrontation in here, and then eventually they fall through the window. There's some strips of glass here, they and they there. fall through the window down onto a stage that's actually cardboard boxes. Did the camera, did see it? Yeah, so usually um, cardboard boxes, they do a couple of things. They first disperse energy, so when you're falling into kind of an awkward position, it kind of lets loose of all the energy so you can do like a big slam so that it doesn't have that huge oh, impact and you're able to go through a box and be safe and not break any part of your body. When they get about four to six inches from the glass, special effects will hit what they call poppers and they'll be on mounted onto the glass themselves. They'll hit this glass, break the glass, the guys will go through, but on camera, it'll look like the guys caused the glass to break and go through. 